If you're using an Android tablet for browsing the web, you should probably be using Google Chrome, right? It's Android, it's made by Google. You're wrong, you're wrong. I'm gonna show you why you should be using Microsoft Edge instead. What's up guys, my name is George, I'm a freelance video marketer based in the north of England. On this channel, I share content all around tech, filmmaking and freelancing, so if that is your vibe, then hit subscribe and welcome to the channel. Today we are looking at Microsoft Edge, using it on a Google Android tablet. For this example, we're going to be using the Samsung Galaxy Tab S6 Lite. I did a video on this recently, if you want to check that out, you can go check that out here. And following a few other videos I've done on Microsoft Edge Chromium 2020, we are looking at it on the Android tablet because it's where I've seen the highest improvement in terms of performance. If you're considering picking up an Android tablet and in the range of the Samsung Galaxy S6 Lite or one of the Tab A series, I would highly recommend trying out Microsoft Edge when you pick up that tablet because if you notice some slight drops in speed when you're using Google Chrome, swapping between tabs, or swapping between Google Chrome and other apps, Microsoft Edge will get rid of a lot of those problems that you'll experience. Using Google Chrome on the tablet isn't necessarily slow by any means, and the improvement that you would see from moving over to Microsoft Edge might only be where you're doing more demanding tasks. But still, I think as an overall browser experience, with one little change, you suddenly have a Google Chrome experience, but with a slightly better performance. I've shown the features of Microsoft Edge 2020 Chromium on iOS and PC in a number of other videos. You can check those out in the info cards over here, as well as some RAM stress tests, which I'll also list over there. Today, I wanna to show why it is a better option for you when using a Google Android tablet, especially those on the lower end of the spec sheet. So when you first open your Android tablet or your Android phone and you go over to Microsoft Edge as the browser, I have mine down here at the dock. When you first go in and you load up to put in a search, something like weather, you'll see it comes up with Bing search results. And as you might know, Microsoft Edge uses Bing as its default search engine. That is because it is Microsoft software and their default search engine is always being Bing. If you are like me and you want to use something like Google for continuity between your devices, and if you've sort of got more of a profile set up with Google, i.e. with maps and other pieces of software like that, then you will want to go into Microsoft Edge's search engine preferences and change that to Google. To do this, it is very, very simple. At the top right of your browser, you will see the three little dots and then come down to your settings, go down to your search under advanced, then default search engine, swap that over to Google, done. When you come back in, if we search weather again, we'll then get Google results. And that's what we want, that's what we like, let's just leave it there. Nice and simple, easy, easy. We like it like that Google, it's amazing. Keep it that way. Besides changing your search engine, everything else within Microsoft Edge feels very much like Google Chrome. This is because it's based on the Chromium open source browser software. So in terms of creating a new tab, going into your settings, everything is very familiar and everything has a very similar layout. It's just certain design elements that are a little bit different. Like for example, the three settings dots at the top of your page, those are the exact same as Chrome except they are horizontal rather than vertical. But then when you get the drop down menu, it's it's all Chrome. It's very, very similar. So if you are getting an Android tablet and by default you open Google Chrome, I don't blame you. That's what I have done for years. But since trying Microsoft Edge on my PC, then on my Mac, then on my iPhone and on this tablet, the largest area of improvement I've actually seen is on this tablet. And I believe that is due to the slightly slower specs. I've also tried it on an old Android phone. I have a Google Pixel 2 for comparison, but that phone is so slow that Microsoft Edge isn't able to recover much speed in terms of operation on that phone. If this is your first time using Microsoft Edge and you've just downloaded it, you might see on my display that everything is under a sort of dark theme. That is because pretty much across all of my software, of all my devices, I always enable some form of dark mode. Luckily within Microsoft Edge, it's quite easy to set up. On a desktop, you might use an extension like dark mode, but within the Microsoft Edge app on Android, you can actually just go up to your settings. At the very, very top under basic, there's appearance, then theme. On here, you can set it up so that things are either under default for Microsoft Edge, yada, yada, then your device, which just matches your overall custom settings on your device, which mine are normally set to dark, or you can have things set to light, which is just quite harsh and then 
dark. Slightly off topic, but the reason why dark mode is fairly popular is because it overall reduces blue light going into your eyes. And whether or not blue light really affects you that much, it has definitely come to affect me quite a lot. Dark mode just makes things a lot easier. I even have an Amazon Kindle Paperwhite, which I have that on dark mode. Even though the light mode isn't particularly harsh, anything where the majority of the screen is dark and the highlights are white or the lighter tones, I find that more forgiving. So something to note in Microsoft Edge, you can set it to dark without having to actually use a dark mode on a tablet, which is great. Despite the slightly different form factor, this version of Edge on Android tablet is very similar to Edge on all of the platforms. Besides one thing, in the new tab setup, you cannot change it to inspirational or focused or informational. You only actually have focused plus an optional newsfeed, which is a bit strange. So at the top right, under your three dots, under settings, you go to the new tab page and then you have the option to hide the newsfeed or not. That's the only customization you have for the new tab page on Android tablet. On Android phone, I'm actually unsure if it did work on the Pixel 2, but I know on iOS it works, and on Windows it works, and on macOS it works. For some reason on this, we don't get that option, which is a shame because this is a really nice bright display. It would have been great to have some of those inspirational photos in the background. My typical setup now, since doing a more recent video, is just to have the focus search bar with one of the inspirational photos, because they're normally just nice scenic photos of beautiful landscapes or wild animals and things like that. But for my day-to-day -day purposes, I don't really like to have news clogging at the bottom of my page, so under new tab, I'm just gonna go back and switch that off. Under the settings, this is everything else you're really gonna need to know with regards to using Edge on a day-to-day -day basis. If you need any sort of other assistance, you can go under accessibility and you can change things like text size to be much bigger or things like that. Or toggle on and off the immersive reader function if you like to have that feature turned on when using some devices. I find it a bit distracting, but some people really like it. That just about wraps it up for Microsoft Edge on the Android tablet. I would do a RAM speed test comparison between Google Chrome and Microsoft Edge, but you can go see a couple of similar videos to that, doing that with Windows and Mac OS. To really see the benefits of Microsoft Edge Chromium 2020 for yourself, get it on your tablet, get it on your phone, get it on your laptop and get it on your PC. Because once you start using it for a week or so, you'll suddenly find everything it does it does the same as, if not better, than Google Chrome. There's not a single thing about it that has made me think, I need to go back to Google Chrome. Once I changed my default search engine to Google, and I started using Microsoft Collections, and I imported all of my Google Chrome extensions over, I suddenly realized it was just a better browser for me personally. So until another browser comes along and suddenly changes everything, or if there's a huge problem with Microsoft Edge at any time, then I'll be sticking with it. I'll be using it across all my devices and recommending it to anyone that asks. But that happens very rarely. People don't really go around asking like, what browser should I use? I wish they did. That, that's a world. That's a world I one day want to live in. Anyway, thank you very, very much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please drop a comment down below if you have any more questions. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And until next time, I'm out. I love you.